Hey folks, welcome to Monday night and to Rooted in Foods and the Davises are going to eat some pretty good food tonight. That's right. And drink some good cocktails too. It's a normal Monday night for yeah. us, right? Well, it is. Well, I think so. I, I like it. <laughs> I know. I know. We had that conversation yesterday. I liked it. Um, so yeah, welcome. Um, we're um, <laughs> you caught me oh, I'm because good we that. had this conversation about do we want to start a couple minutes early? And in my head, that means we have to like stretch until people actually get online to us. <laughs> we didn't so do that. That's in my head, and now I'm trying to. Yeah. Um, we didn't know, start early. Ad lib, and we I'm not started on time. Um, so tonight on the Davises Eat, really good food from vintage eras. Mm -hmm. uh, where we cook the books. Where we cook the books. <laughs> the old books. The old books. Um, we are actually eating out of a 1983 um, branded cookbook for carnation evaporated milk. It's called Good Eating with carnation evaporated milk. Imagine that. Um, a tradition with carnation. And I will show you. Woo. And I even bought the actual brand of evaporated milk for this one. <laughs> uh, I don't normally um, buy carnation, but I figure we might as well match the the book. So you guys know I have a lot of cookbooks. So yeah. These are some of my favorites. Are from mid century. Nineteen eighty three isn't exactly mid century, but a little later than that. I'm not mid century um, yet. Because a couple more months, you've got a couple more months before you're technically That's right. <laughs> We're gonna have a birthday party this summer for mid century chili. Yeah. Um, so anyway, branded cookbooks, in other words, food brands that published cookbooks in order to entice homemakers and moms um, to buy their products, to buy their product. Yeah, and when we were introducing new products. Um, Jell-O is one of them. Evaporated milk is one of them. A lot of so, them in the 30s and 40s. So, so Woodford, when did you we just cut me off. I did. I'm just giving Woodford a. They they might watch our show. They, somebody so, from Woodford so, might see our show. One Wood, of these days. Woodford, it it would behoove you to make a branded cookbook. We would we would purchase that one. Yeah, we would. It would. Um, I think we've managed to figure out how to drink Woodford. Old Forester. Or Old Forester. Same difference. And Old Forester. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so um, the cookbooks, and they were never very big, but they um, they were how brands and companies taught people how to use their product. Branded cookbook. So I have, <laughs> so I have, I have a lot of them because I grab them when I can. They're they're unique and interesting mm -hmm. and full of some great ideas. So that's where we're going tonight. <laughs> But uh, but you've shown off like all of your favorite bourbons. Yeah, we're not using bourbon. No, we're <laughs> not. That's okay. It's okay. I'm just gi giving them a oh shout out God. to say, hey, get us a branded cookbook. We're gonna give this brand a try tonight. Reka vodka. We haven't had it before. Besides tonight, when well, we taste tested, we taste -tested it, it a minute and ago. made sure it didn't suck, and it doesn't. It doesn't. It's pretty good stuff. It's pretty good. Uh, it's you know, it's vodka. So it's a neutral grain spirit, and you can taste the neutral grain in it. And it's delicious. It's pretty good. I'm not going to say it's delicious. It's pretty good. So we're going to make a gimlet tonight. So we're going to have two ounces of vodka per cocktail. And we're making two cocktails because there's two of us drinking. We're going to start with two cocktails. We're going to make more. Because those little cocaine glasses are needle. They are, but that's okay. And we get to that. Freshly squeezed. Freshly squeezed lime juice. Right out of the real lime. Right. It says, it says real lime yeah. right there. That's, that's why I buy that. So brand. we're going to use three quarters of an ounce. So we're using two. So we're going to go an ounce and a half. Because I don't want to squeeze it twice. Too much squeezing. It gets sore. <laughs> Do you, do you want to ask why I know that? No. Okay. Well, I just, <laughs> We're going to stop that conversation okay. before it gets oh, well, just, How much simple syrup are we using? We're using half an ounce per cocktail, so one ounce. And is that simple syrup or is that super simple syrup? Um, if it's made in this house, it's super simple syrup. So Meaning twice the amount of sugar than it's supposed to be. <laughs> hey, I didn't get fat going on, a, on diets. 
<laughs> doing the daily recommended. Amazing. Right. You have the perfect t shirt on tonight, by the way. The next sarcastic comment you put you on. Yeah. Well, yes. I try. I try. So we're going to shake that up over some ice. Pour that into our coupe. It's a pretty color. If, well, it's a gimlet. I know. It's got lime juice in it. So if we actually um, garnished our cocktails, which if, we almost never do. We never garnish here. Would you put that bottle of vodka back in the background so I can get it and not the darn buoy? Thank you. So if we got if we garnished, you just garnish with a slice of lime, a little lime wheel, Ooh, and it would be oh. perfect. Okay, I'm done. You guys know I have to do that because we don't make the second round. Well, thank you, Jen. She says it's a pretty drink. I think so. Yeah. All right, okay. All right well, hurry, hurry, hurry. Cheers. Cheers to us. Mm. Oh, no. This is this is going to be uh, bad. That's a really good one. <laughs> this might. <my. laughs> <clears throat> So if anybody remembers the lemon drop episode. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> this is pretty much a lime drop. Um, but this is really good. It's the sweetness of the yes. of the simple. And it pairs extremely well with the tartness of the lime. And then it completely makes the flavor of the vodka disappear. You don't even know you're drinking. No. No, this is bad. This I mean, is, this is delicious, but this could be bad. It could be scary. <laughs> And that's just what we needed on a Monday night. At least through little glasses. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. That is so good. All right. I'm going to set mine down. Oh, you're going to set yours down. <laughs> move over there. Uh, away from she's going to move into. away from me. Go uh, over there. Hello. So, again, here's our cookbook that we're cooking out of. Well, we're really not good with the what uh, it's just pixelated oh i probably moved it to you i don't think it jennifer you're watching is that pixelated on your end hmm i think it's just the translation between yeah it may be all the softwares we're using anyway so no tell him um so carnation branded uh, cookbook for evaporated milk she says it's a little pixelated a little but not bit. very much okay. yeah well that's okay well not much I can do. Yeah, not, nothing we can do. Get better um, Wi-Fi. Lots of really good recipes in here. Lots of things that I grew up eating, to be honest with you. Like, there's nothing in here I haven't had at least once or many more times. Um, but I am picked out a chicken breast Dijon mustard. We'll go back to this. What? The big camera. Oh, big camera. Okay. Hello again. Well, I thought you were over here for a minute. Um, well, I am. So anyway, chicken breast Dijon is the name of the recipe. This makes... Um, like nearly 24 large servings. This is a very, very large recipe. We're not doing that. We're going to cut it back so we can serve the family for dinner. Uh -oh. And are you eating the cheese? No. You can't eat all the cheese. I won't have anything to stuff your breast with. Um, uh -oh. I like so stuffed breasts. <laughs> we are rolling up chicken cutlets with ham and Swiss cheese that Chili's eating all up. It's good. I, it's I delicious cheese. Um, which we've done before. When we did Chicken Kiev, we mm -hmm. did something very similar. However, we're going to kind of pan sear them, get them browned on all sides, to throw them in the air fryer to finish. Um, so it kind of speeds things up a little bit. Take that, Alton. And the <laughs> yeah, AB's not a fan of air fryers. Um, yeah. But it will speed things up a bit because while they're finishing in the air fryer, we're going to build our sauce in the pan. Mm -hmm. And somebody time me because this really won't take long. No. We'll try to get you out of here in under 45 minutes tonight. If not, more cocktails for us. Okay. Uh, so. Where are you going to be? I'm going to be here, but I'm going to. I have Boom. a tablespoon of olive oil and a tablespoon. Ish. Ish. Of butter in my skillet that we are going to melt so we have some fat to work with mm. and i bought two big chicken breasts so i have already cut them in half and pounded them we need some extra counter space here uh, if you ever need extra counter space open your doors put a um 
cutting board down and you'll have a little extra space. Or buy a couple TV trays. I've done that too. Um, We've done it all. I am will have to wash my hands here after we are totally done. But these are already pounded out. We're just going to make this work. That last one's a little bit, a little bit on the little side, but we're going to make it work anyway. All right. Um, you know what? Would you grab, since I have chicken on my hands, would you grab some ham out of there and just yeah. put it on the silver thing? Yeah. Like maybe a quarter of it. Um, once you handled raw meat, don't start touching things. Don't like, start handling you know, ham lunch meat. Thank you. Let's lunch see. meat. That's about half actually. It'll be all right. All right, we're gonna use two big slices, and this just just I uh, don't even remember what brand it is. It's just deli sliced ham, so it's all you need here. And if a little bit of it hangs off the end or out the sides, that's okay too. Oh, that was perfect actually. Wow, how'd you do that? You're just that good. Uh, I know my hand measurements. Hand measurements. Okay. Um, you can season the insides of this with salt and pepper if you want. I didn't because I think the ham and the cheese carry plenty of the salt. Oh, this is going to be a scary night. Round two. Oh, goodness. Um, I have I have this problem overstuffing things like chicken and, you know, Tacos and burritos and pretty much anything that I have you to do. Stuff in the you house. overstuff. Yeah, I overstuff. Uh, so I, I probably have an eighth of a cup of shredded cheese in each one of these, and I'm we'll just actually I'm gonna I'm gonna unstuff just a bit and save some of this cheese just to throw in with the sauce just to give it a little bit of that same flavor profile. Okay, so now we're going to roll. Can you do one over here somewhere so they can actually see like a, a really good picture of it? Because it's. You mean rolling one or you just want me yeah. to. Yeah. Um, oh, no. Sort of. Oh, it's okay. If you can't, you can't. Well, no, not with. Uh, not with the heat going. Heat going. I can't. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. It's you just that it's. figure out how to do a wireless cam over here. We're, I like this. After you do this for a while, can we. Just, um, Wiggle that so the butter and oil mixes together. You don't want your butter to brown, and that's what's going to happen there. Um, we, we've noticed some things that we're going to try to change, but probably not until this summer when I've got time to fuss with it. We're going to improve. We're not yeah. going to change. We're going to improve. Thank you. That's all mine. It's on low. Um, so I'm just rolling these up. I don't have toothpicks or anything that I'm, you know, stabbing them with. You certainly could do that, but we're just going to pray that they hold together. How's that? And the cheese will, by the way, melt. I mean, clearly the cheese will melt, but if it melts out the sides, that's okay too. All right. I'm going to just set these down, seam side down, in my pan. Once you get them going, they they won't unroll. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands. Get rid of a few things. Always wash your hands after handling any kind of raw meats before you start touching other stuff. Like your gimlet glass. Like your gimlet glass. Otherwise, wear gloves and just discard the gloves if you if that's easier. I know a lot of people don't like the feel of raw meat. I did not season the outside of those, so I'm going to hit them with um, with um, 
with um, uh, salt and pepper. pepper. Yeah. Um, a little AP. I think I'm just going to do salt and pepper. I'm I'm afraid the garlic will overpower. Mm. And of course, we'll have salt and pepper in the sauce. sauce. Yeah, the sauce too. And I'm going to use white pepper because I can. Black pepper would be equally delicious. Alright, getting rid of this. Yeah, that light kind of works. It's better than nothing, but man, everything just washes it out. It washes it out. Yeah, too bad. And we just want these to sear on the underside. Well, turn the light off. Just to see what it does. Well, turning the light off might screw up the camera. Yeah. Oh. Better. Better. Okay. Well, it was. Hmm. Then it picked up that light. Okay. I need to. Yeah, we might turn the lights on and off a little bit. All right, so we're gonna just rotate those until until they finish searing. Goodness. And then we'll finish them in the air fryer, which I'm going to turn on right now. Um, I have a ninja foodie that I use all the time, and as the weather heats up, the temperature heats up, I really start using it. I don't like having the oven on in the summer. So, um, so I'm setting it to 390. Jen says so, she doesn't ever wear gloves. She just does the old Dawn dish soap and hot water. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have to kind of hold them, I didn't, I mean, you could put his toothpick in here and keep him from doing exactly what that one just did. <laughs> Want some toothy picks? No, I'm going to try to get her one back up here. But yeah, I grabbed me a toothpick. I'll, I'll sew that one back together. I have more. So, word to the wise, to pick them. Ooh, hot. Yeah, see, that one kind of glued itself together when I seared it. That, that one that didn't get enough heat on it didn't glue. All right. I had to turn the heat down. Yeah, this one's just not going to stay together. That's okay. We have more. It's fine. It's already done its thing. When I stick it in the air fryer, I'll fix it. All right. All right. I'm going to turn the heat off. Already? Oh, yeah. I didn't take much. Oh. Well, Let me grab another plate here real fast. Air fryer coming up. Yeah. Watch out, Shiggy Bug. Yeah, you just, part of why I'm doing this is so I have the drippings for the sauce. And you can't really see that on the black pan, but I have this beautiful yeah, you can. meat drippings. I'm going to try to fix this one while Chili tells you more about the gimlet. Mm, I don't really know what else to tell them. <laughs> Other than it's Clearly delicious. It's, delicious. <laughs> it's really good. Um don't use uh, sweetened lime juice. Use, use regular lime juice. And if you really want to get, you know, fancy, you can freshly squeeze your limes. Mm -hmm. And that's awful lot of limes to use to get, you know, we're at three ounces of lime juice right now. So mm. you get awfully expensive. That's why we recommend mm -hmm. real lime, lime juice. Or it's generic brethren. All right, I'm going to juice. add a little bit more butter to my pan so I can build the sauce. So another tablespoon. Let it melt. While I put the, I'm putting that back on low heat. I'm going to, I'm good. I, I fixed it. Okay. Fixed it enough that it, it's going to be fine. Well, I just had a couple extra toothpicks. 
Um, these really won't take long. We've cooked them probably nearly halfway at this point. Well, let me get you to where they actually see you over there. Yeah. She's way back in the back, way folks. Back in the back. Way no back camera. there. Um, and if they fall apart. And she has a dog watching her every step of the way. The same one who did get the two pieces of cheese that I dropped earlier. So we're going to start this in about eight minutes and then we'll check in. So they really do. This one is actually really fast. It's much faster than I usually think it's going to be. Yeah. Well, we still have to make our Dijon. Yes, I do. Sauce. I'm going to put the ham back up. We'll eat it for lunch. The rest of it. All right, so we are building basically a cream sauce. Uh, I'm not really going to say it's the bechamel because I've already added more things to it than <laughs> what would be. Um, and a bechamel. Yeah. Like the chicken drippings, for instance. Yeah. Um, but it is most definitely a cream sauce. And because of that, we need to build a... Roo! A roo! A little baby kangaroo. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of flour in my fat. We'll show that on TV. There it is on screen. And I'm going to get a flat whisk. And we're uh, ru ruining it up, folks. Not making a huge amount of sauce, enough that we've got some to sauce our noodles, which I will show you here in a bit. Um, all right, you want that to do its thing. All right, I think I'm done with the butter. Man, that Another looks good. Drink. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that's a good cocktail. Mm -hmm. We're going to season at the end. So I, I actually bought a little can of oh, the can. evaporated milk. Mm. So I would have, it's white, so I would have just enough to use for this recipe. It is a five ounce can. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise I'll have an open can in the fridge and I don't want to mess with that. So We just have to make some snow ice cream with it. Not with this. This oh. isn't snow ice cream. Oh, it's not snow ice cream stuff. But you make a really good comment. The difference between sweet and condensed milk and evaporated milk. Oh. So um, snow ice cream uses the same way. Snow ice cream is the sweet and condensed sweet milk. Sweet condensed milk is it's my favorite stuff. Right, is uh, snow ice cream. Um, all right, I'm going to add my evaporated milk. So they do start out similarly um evaporated milk is exactly what it sounds like you can add water to it to get it to whole milk consist um yeah well consistency and we have it well, because it's shelf stable because it's shelf stable um th this is going to get me in trouble long before we had baby formula <laughs> This is what, not babies necessarily, but what kids would drink if they didn't have access to fresh milk um, before we had milk in jugs and gallons and all of that. So, um, so we're, you know, talking early 1900s here. Oh, uh -huh. right, you so better hurry because it's, yeah, no. I'm going to add about half a cup of white, dry white wine. What, what wine are we using tonight? I'm using barefoot. Barefoot. Screw top, barefoot screw, screw top. top. Um, I find that it's fine to cook with, and sometimes I'll even drink it. High quality stuff over here at the Davis household. Mm -hmm. We're going to add a couple. How, how mustardy do you want this? Very. Okay, so it's got add, Dijon in the name. I want Dijon. Yeah, we're going to add a couple tablespoons. Of Dijon mustard. What um, brand of Dijon mustard are we using tonight? French's. The standard yellow mustard that I love so much. That's who you should come up with. Two. Oh, I think French's has one. I just have to find one. Yeah, brands that have been around for a while 
typically have their own cookbooks. Yeah, a cookbook. They might be a little older, but I'm gonna turn this down because we're already kind of sick here. Yeah. Um, stir. Yes, please stir. I need a temperature. I have lots of them. Man, this does look really good. Oh, I can smell the Dijon mustard in there. Yeah. Ten minutes, eight minutes. When I say eight minutes, it's about about the right amount of time. Um, we're going to add this cheese to it because since I touched it with chicken hands, I can't put it back in the cheese container. So, so is this a, a little cheesy. chicken Dijon Alfredo? Mm. Or I just... mean, Alfredo is really just cream based oh not but, cheese um well yeah parmesan goes in it but um i remember correctly the original alfredo was not didn't have cheese in it no i have to look that up i could be wrong uh, i'm just I'm basing it off of my oh that is a little cheesy this is very good though Ooh, yummy mm -hmm. um it is a little thick it so probably going to, needs to come off the heat. Well, we're going to whisk in some water and thin it out. Oh, okay. I also think the wine flavor is just a wee, a wee bit heavy. So the original recipe calls for like one and two thirds cups of the carnation milk, a cup of wine, which is a lot, and another cup of water um, cooked with flour and butter. So it makes a lot of sauce. We're not doing that today. We're going to take that off the heat. We're going to add some salt. As I stir. Yep. Chili's being a good sous chef. And some pepper. Ooh, pepper, 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 pepper. Um, I like white pepper because it just blends in. I have another drink. Yep. Okay. More cocktails. I'm going to taste. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe just a little bit more salt. It just as you need to, based on how you, you know, like it when you taste it. Oh, come on. There we go. I like diluted the mustard a bit much. All right. These are done. So seven minutes got them done. And I've got a couple here where the bits of ham kind of burned on the edge. I don't care. Just crispies. <laughs> There's just crispy bits then. Crispy bits. So I'm gonna plate one of these pretty ones. As soon as I remember what I did with my palms. I made sure one was upside down so it would be pretty. <laughs> and we're going to this. I had to let her dog in. We're going to spoon some sauce over this, and then we're going to noodle. I got it. Thank you. There we go. I think the, uh, the Wi-Fi is <laughs> increased bandwidth. Uh, what camera am I on? I'm going to spoon a little bit of sauce over this. Uh, nope, I was wrong. It's still artifacty as all get out. Okay. And then I'll show you the noodles. So I'm using Mrs. Miller's homemade old fashioned white egg noodles. Yeah, they can't see that. Go over to camera two. There we I go. I'm using <laughs> Mrs. Miller's homemade old fashioned white egg noodles. Um, we buy these at our local Amish market. Typically is where I find them. And I like them for a couple of reasons. They're really thick and dense. This is what they look like when they're cooked. I cook them um, to probably two minutes under. They've been sitting here a bit. Um, so it took about 10 minutes to get them cooked. 
all the way through because when you put them in the sauce, they'll continue to cook a little bit. Yeah, we agree, Jen. Those are the best bits, the little crunchies. Oh, yeah, for sure. Most definitely. Where'd your thing go to stir with? Hmm? Where'd your stir stick go? Right here. Oh. All right, so I'm going to turn this back up now. If you want enough sauce to spoon over all of your chicken, just reserve some before you add noodles to it. Um, this will soak up. And I, I gotta tell you, I don't like getting noodles with the sauce like poured over it. I want it all mixed up together. So that's what I do on the home front. <laughs> Because I want everything to be saucy. saucy like me. Saucy and sassy. Just like me. Maneuver here. Mm -hmm. Would you grab my camera? I'm going to take some pictures. I'm going to make you guys watch me take a picture of this real fast because it's my, it's my pretty one. Here's your camera. And then we're going to cut into it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you might have any questions. Anybody watching? Uh, a couple of people. Um, I need light. I need this light back up, please. Okay. Close your eyes, folks. It's going to get bright. We can get a little bit of the behind the scenes here. Yeah. Here we are. We're back to the big camera. I think see us all. All right. Need to some of these. If you need some green to go with it, broccoli, asparagus, asparagus. salad. Mm -hmm. Oh, salad does sound good with it. Kale. Nope. Kale deserves to be in the trash. Nah, nope. Go over there to number two. As soon as I put some black pepper on it, so it's not an entirely so white plate. Entirely white plate with the blue. You just don't use white pepper. She's taking pictures again. Of course I am. Yeah. Is Man, that smells so good. Well, if I, I'm going to give people recipes, I need to really give people photos too. I understand. I understand. <laughs> I got to get caught up mostly on the recipe part. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it looks good. It smells good. Mm -hmm. It tastes good. All right. I'm going to do it to it. All right, we need one last gimlet. How many has she had, folks? More than you. How's that? Um, here, I'll put it under this. Oh, that's warm. Here we go. Yeah, we're going to improve the camera situation. Here, how about that? That'll work. <laughs> we'll improve the cameras eventually. You know, budgets and all. Um, so chicken breast, it's just like three minutes after seven. This goes pretty quick. Yeah. Noodles I did ahead of time, but you could do the noodles while you're cooking the sauce and it all comes out about the same time. Um, chicken breast rolled up with ham, Swiss cheese, seasoned with salt and pepper if you want to, not if you don't. Um, old fashioned egg noodles that are really good and dense and like fill your belly up noodles, um, carnation or any kind of evaporated milk, white wine, butter, drippings from the chicken, a little bit of the leftover cheese, salt, pepper, white pepper, black pepper, posh noodles. <laughs> Grandma's wrong. She says that I ate kale yesterday. No, actually, he did not. I only put no. it in hours. <laughs> I had, had spinach. spinach yesterday. You But we had, had kale. kale because I ran out of spinach. Yeah, because I got the good stuff. We, yeah. You we guys got the leftovers. You guys got the kale. I got the good stuff. I got the, the spinach. Well, I am going to get a knife and a couple forks. I am well aware that I did not have kale. We have to show off the plate and we have to, you know, eat the food. We might take another time. We're going to make 
Yeah. Knock it back. Okie dokie. Don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> I was waiting for you to do that. <laughs> well, you weren't waiting very well. <laughs> Work. Okay. Well, you you cut first. Oh, well, you can't have noodles first. <sighs> no. I, I think I left the two. No, I got two. Okay. Yeah, that looks well, so I'm good. I'm gonna cut into it so you guys mm -hmm. can maybe see the inside. Ooh, that might be a good picture to take. Might be. Here, see if they can hold that up to the camera. And maybe not get it all. Uh, it's all. Yeah. Blows everything out. Blown out. Blown out. One of these days we're gonna figure out good cameras. Well, I need to put my, mm -hmm. we know. my real we camera know. up there. We know. Oh, yeah, that my, looks my delicious. Other, my other friend Jennifer says you can fix anything in post. <laughs> yes. It's true, you can. You can fix anything in post, but we're not posting. We're doing live. I know, but my camp, my photos are post. Yeah, your photos are post. Speaking of post, I will tell you as soon as we take a bite what's going on this week. This Friday? Mm, Thursday and Friday. And Thursday. Oh, that's true. Hey, uh, <laughs> cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, cheers. <laughs> Ma'am. You guys, these old cookbooks have some pretty darn good mm -hmm. stuff in them. Even if they're brand specific. Well, and even if you have to doctor it up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. One thing I would tell you about Midwest, Midwest, mid-century. Oh. And into the 80s, easily into the 80s. Everything was really bland because that's our palate. Mm -hmm. It's really bland in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. I have to doctor things quite a bit. And you do a great job with it because, man, that's so good. Mm. That's got mm. that Dijon taste mm -hmm. that carries over. No, I would. A little bit of cheese. I'd, I'd give this to the Grey Poupon guy and say, yeah, I'll have this instead. Frenches. Frenches. Yeah. Need to add this Frenches. To yeah. <laughs> Good shit. Mm. I'll let it <laughs> Yeah. If you don't, we will. <clears throat> we will anyway. Yeah. Um. Because it's ours. So. And I did, the chicken is not exact out of the cookbook. The chick, the cookbook recipe actually calls for um, dried beef, which you can still buy in a jar. Like you could, yeah. Not my favorite thing. I much prefer the ham and Swiss combo over the beef and Swiss combo. Um, so it's a little reminiscent of some other things that we've done, but ooh, it's good. That's delicious. That is So this week, a couple things are going on. We got a few people still watching. Um, hey, Judy. Judy. Hello. Yeah. What? She I can't see. She used to drink vodka gimlets back in the day. Hey. Right. Have one today yeah. in the day or night. Right. Oh, they are really good. Um, so, okay. So Thursday night, some of you saw this on Facebook mm -hmm. already, but I, I recorded a cooking segment uh, with our local Rentalman Orchards. Uh, with Michelle Searles last week that will air on our local PBS station, WSIU, yep. this week, Thursday mm -hmm. night at 7 p.m. Central. Um, it's a segment for their In Focus um, right. news slash talk show. Mm -hmm. And it's the first of many to come. Um, by by the time August, September rolls around, we'll kind of be in full swing with some of the, the mm -hmm. cooking segments. So, so that's a really cool thing that we get to do. She get, I'm, I'm not involved oh, no, yeah, in that. Not involved in that There's no happening. cocktails. No, no cocktails. Um, no. Not with PBS. But um, so yeah. anyway, that that was fun. I will tell you, it's very different than this. <laughs> this is kind of off the cuff and ad libbed. Um, so I think we all learned a lot. It was everybody's first first skinny pig go around, mm -hmm. but we had we had so much fun. Um, and everybody knew each other, so it, it made it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. But so that airs in focus on Thursday night, Thursday 7 p.m. And then re-airs again on Sunday at 11 a.m., I think. Uh, April 20th. April 20th. And then April 23rd. 
uh, but I'll post a link also. It, it goes out on YouTube eventually. So, so there's that. And then those of you who are local uh, within driving distance of Carbondale, mm -hmm. we are taking this show live, live, <laughs> live, live like in real life, live um, to our Carbondale Elks Lodge on mm -hmm. Friday night for the first of five. five in a series of our Midwest regional cooking. Not Midwest, it's regional. Well, like, regional, yeah. Friday night is Midwest. Um, so lots of cool things. We'll have a goodie basket to raffle off, and we're cooking. Um, we're cooking so much food. We've got all from the Midwest area. Yeah, this, is, this is the Midwest. So we're doing uh, the bootleg cocktail out of Minnesota. We're doing the Smith and Kearns out of South Dakota. Those are the cocktails of the evening. Uh, we're doing baked muscacholi, T Ravs, uh, butter burgers out of Wisconsin. Uh, uh, some kind of corn, corn out of Iowa, Iowa. That was quite the argument when we did it. That yeah. Was, I mean, a fun argument um, amongst our Iowa friends. Yeah. Some people had heard of it and some other had yeah. scallop corn. Um, scallop corn. We've got, let's see, what else are we oh, doing? Beer, Rotten. cheese, oh, beer, cheese tater to cover tots. tots. For the butter burgers. Yes. So Wisconsin there. And then the dessert is. <laughs> Making so many cream puffs this week. Yes. Uh, we pulled from Illinois the cream puffs, but we are doing mini ones filled mm -hmm. with chocolate mousse. So that's right. So we're taking this show on the road to our local Elks, where we cook once every six or eight weeks anyway. Yeah. Um, we cook dinner down there, so mm -hmm. everybody's asking us for the food and the recipes. And we just decided. So we're gonna have we're gonna have cookbooks available yep. that evening. A limited supply. Very limited supply. Of cookbooks. Short, run, on cookbooks. Short run of the cookbooks. Um, locally done by Schwabel Printing. Where we get everything else done locally. This thing here came from Schwabel, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a, business. We'll have a uh, gift basket. That's going to support the stuff that the Elks does. The, the, the lodge that's going to support uh, the roof. The lodge. Is that what we yeah, we're gonna do the roof. Yeah, we had some storm damage, so we're trying to help raise money to repair the the roof, repair or replace. A little bit of both. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, that didn't matter. But, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're we're fundraising it up, and mm -hmm. you know what? We are having fun. We're enjoying right? the hell out of this. Pull it out of this. Yeah. <laughs> it, right eat, now, I'm a little warm, but enjoy. Yeah. If you're not having fun, then why are you doing it? Living. Yeah. And we definitely enjoy the hell out of what we're doing. So. Um, but that said, you know, if anybody wants to, you know, sponsor Come in, us, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Westeros, Woodford, Carnation Milk, Nestle, Old Forester, maybe. Anybody. <laughs> Bamboo. I can do a lot of different rum cocktails. <laughs> All right. Mm. Not to know for the begging. I'm not begging. I can't. I'm. This shouldn't shock me that this is so good, but this is really good. It is. No, it shouldn't shock you because you made it. Aw, you're yeah. so sweet. Okay, okay. What did Jennifer say? Oh, watch party. <laughs> yes, watch party. We go watch party for Thursday night. Um, well, we could, except for you and I have something else going on Thursday night, so we're not actually going to be able to catch it live. We're going to have to record it. Because all of this has given given way into something else that's going on tonight. So, uh, so yeah, it's we, we got invited to a, another thing. Another thing, because sure. of our yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, we're, doing, we're, doing, we're having fun. We're going to give you more information on that maybe in a week or two. Um. But yeah, we we're getting invited to things, and uh, people are paying attention to it. So, and that's good. Um, we appreciate them paying attention. Um, um, so all, all in the, the name of teaching people how to cook. Yeah. Which we started during the pandemic. Okay, and drink. That, you guys know I get chatty when I drink one too many. That's right. That's where I'm at right now. So we're going to stop. Hey, um, 45 <laughs> minutes. We well, are we are right there. I mean, we've been talking for the last 10. But we're at like 45 minutes. Um, so this is easy. Comes together fast. Make it. I will get caught up on recipes and newsletters, I promise. Yep. Um, yep. 45 minutes and 21 seconds right now. This isn't too bad. You guys know we're Tito's people. But we are not, Tito's people. It's not it's, too bad if yeah. you want to change your pace. Yeah. These are blasted delicious. Yeah. We and know what on we're that doing. note, you know everything that's happening with us this week. 
um we'll stop there we will see you guys next monday come visit us live at the carbon Oaks. absolutely um this friday night if you're if you're close enough to do that and uh, if we have cookbooks left over i might I'll have to figure out how to get them up on the website so i can sell them but uh, but yeah, mm, no, they gotta have, they gotta have to get a hold of us. <sighs> you have to get her contact more, information. Folks. She's on Facebook. You guys know this. I'm on Facebook a lot. All right, get a hold so of her. We're gonna before I like melt completely. Oh, it's just a light. It is the light. The lights kill the me. Lights kill I me. had that problem in high school <laughs> choir too with state yeah. lights. That's completely more than you guys even want to think about. So. She doesn't like being on the lights. Mm, too hot. All too right. Hot. We'll see you guys next Monday. Thanks for hanging Bye, out folks. with us.